Chiaris. Guardian Leviosa! <laughs> so now that I have your guys' attention, I hope you realize the power and importance of target training. It is very important. And I think as soon as you guys realize the power that this little wand, if you will, has, you will go get some Chinese food and get a chopstick and teach your bird this skill ASAP. So many people message me saying that their bird's aggressive or they need to build trust. This right here is how you're gonna do that. So with us today is going to be Stephanie and Petrie, the little tiny dinosaur, and they're awesome, lovely people. Stephanie is someone I like to think of as an avian academic. She's very smart and well-versed in the bird world and bird community. She's also a fan of Harry Potter, so I thought that I had actually changed the intro I had before to one that is a little bit more interesting, and I hope it has conveyed the importance of target training it will help you immensely and one other thing when i first got bogey i thought target training was kind of for lame timid birds who couldn't do any cool tricks and those ideas are further from the truth i wish i had known the power and importance of a target training when i got bogey so i hope all this information helps <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you for, oh gosh, see, there you go. That's what Bogey will do. <laughs> oh my God, look at him. <laughs> Being a freak, please don't do that. No. All right. I'm like, the fun is over. Thank you so much for taking the time to actually come on Flock Life and help us out. Yeah, thank you perspective. For this is so fun. <laughs> okay, so we are going to be talking about target training. And I kind of said in my little intro before I got you on, I, when I got bogey, heard about target training, but I had no idea how important it is to have mm -hmm. in your toolbox, so to speak. Yeah. Why don't you explain just kind of the basic concept of target training and why it's so beneficial for every single bird owner, no matter how small or big your bird is to know how to do this. Yeah. So target training is basically just the idea of presenting a target, a stick. I usually use like a chopstick, mm -hmm. you can use really whatever. And it's a very simple idea when the animal in this case, birds, this is a bird channel touches the end of the target stick and they touch it gently, you can reward them. Um, so you can kind of break it down into like the ABCs of target training, where that stands for antecedent or the cue, which is really simply just presenting the target in this case, that's the cue. You show them the, the target stick and they know that they wanna go touch that. Um, or in the beginning, they don't necessarily know, but birds are very beaky, they're very curious. So it's a very easy thing to um, get them to associate the touching the stick is going to get them a reward. So once they do touch the stick, and they do so gently, that is the behavior, that's the behavior that we want. Um, and then they're going to uh, face the consequences or the sea, which are good things in this case, and are something like positive reinforcement through giving a treat, um, or sometimes even just if you're working with a bird that's really uncomfortable, sometimes the reinforcement can just be backing up, right? And kind of removing yourself from the situation, just anything that is gonna be seen as a reinforcer. Petrie here has a high, beak to body ratio. So that can be a little bit intimidating. Um, and I taught him to actually do target training with his tongue rather than his beak. Nice. Yeah. So he'd have to like reach. Yeah. yeah. He has to really reach. Asking for the reach without getting him frustrated. Fails so long. He can stick his tongue out. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's basically, I mean, all we're doing, right? The second that he touches the target stick, right? I'm clicking. If you can get them to not be frustrated about it, but to really reach for the, the tip of the target with their tongue, you just, you're completely eliminating the possibility that you're going to get bit. What is the value of having this awesome training in your toolbox? Yeah. So, ooh, uh-oh. <laughs> okay. 
So I think that you experienced, right, one of the, the best benefits of target training, right? You were encountering kind of aggressive behaviors yep. with Woody, even though, you know, he was already such a great bird and he would come out for you and he'd step up and, you know, he was rolling over, which is like, you know, the most atypical behavior yeah. for a bird, right? To go on their back and be fine with it right? But you still encountered some aggression. And I imagine that the way that you use target training was to just kind of dial it back, right? Kind yep. of reset the totally. what's going on. And redirect think- his, his crazy aggressive energy elsewhere. Right. <laughs> or even yeah. if it's so bad, you know, springtime was really brutal. So it would be like, all right, let's target train him into his cage like just get him there so he can settle down so petrie a lot of alexandrian parakeets indian ringnecks um asiatic parrots they can be really fearful and they can have really strong hesitancies or just be really apprehensive um and for him he that was most encountered with the harness right and trying to get him to even just be okay with the harness targeting him Uh with the harness and then having like seeds sprinkle over the harness. You were talking about communication and building trust. Is that another aspect of why target training is an important tool to have? Yeah, absolutely. So when, at least for me, when I'm kind of working with a new bird, there's an eclectus parrot that I recently started working with that has some aggressive tendencies, you know, is, is a plucker and is very overly bonded to one person and kind of attacks everybody else in the family. So the number one thing that I, (laughs) relatable, the number one thing that I recommended there was start doing hands-off target training, just the people that the bird is not overly bonded to, right? So you can do target training while the bird is in the cage. And it's such a simple form of kind of base level communication, right? Most birds are gonna see that target stick and they're gonna wanna go touch it. They're gonna wanna go investigate. All you have to do is, is pair that with a click or some other type of bridging stimulus, right? You you say yes, I think, mm-hmm. right? Because I never have my clicker. <laughs> you got to get it. So I'm like, I have to say something. It's a very simple, easy to understand form of communication. You're kind of building trust. I think it's also a really great way to start to be able to observe your bird's body language around new situations, mm-hmm. right? So some birds, when you present them with a stick, they might be fearful. They might back up they might be fearful or or aggressive in the sense that they start kind of attacking the stick, right? And for a lot of people that are maybe experiencing aggression from their parrots, a lot of the times it's just because they have been doing things and kind of ignoring their bird's body language, right? So kind of putting them in a situation where you are up close, but you can do it hands off because you can have the bird in, in the cage you're kind of gauging your bird's comfort level around you, around the, the target um, and all of that. So it, it is a really great way to just kind of build trust and honestly get the bird to like you, right? Because yeah. you're the one that's giving them treats and they're For gonna sure. start to associate you with that. Just their willingness to train too, mm-hmm. you know? And that's part of what you're saying about understanding their body language. We have these perceptions about a bird, right? You know, that's an aggressive bird or, you know, that bird's really moody and really grumpy. And then you start to do these simple forms of training like target training, which is really, it's it's base level, right? It's the simplest form of training. And that bird is not so aggressive, right? So I had a really similar story with these uh, green cheek conures that I work with. And one of them, his nickname is Grinch, right? Because he's so he can be so moody and, you know, territorial and, and all of that, but he was, he took to target training immediately. And, you know, this is a 10 year old bird that has never oh. done any training and within a couple of minutes, totally out of his shell, totally comfortable with everybody, letting people handle him. Wow. Everything. That's amazing. Yeah. It goes, it goes a long way, a little bit of, a little bit of training. So you can really use the target training to train a lot of other types of behaviors Um, for, I unfortunately don't have any videos of this for some reason, but that's how I taught Petrie flying and recall training and, you know, sending or, you know, telling him to go somewhere else was to use the the target stick. And it's also good too, because birds that are more timid, that trust is more built because they're like, oh, she has the stick. She's kind of in control, not Mm -hmm. in the negative sense of control, but just they can trust you. 
because they know that you know what you're doing. It's right. a training session. It's not just a free for all. Exactly. Yeah. They know what to expect. I think a lot of, you know, anxiety around training, right. Birds are very perceptive to how we're feeling. Right. So if we go into a training session and we're just like, what are we going to do? I don't know. And we don't yeah. have any plan and that can lead to mishaps and anxiety. The bird is also going to pick up on that. Yeah. So when we have, you know, the yes. target stick out and we're doing target training, we know what we're doing. If we kind of get off track, we can always really easily call it back. And that's going to also be comforting to the bird, right? Because they know what yes. the expectations are. And boy. that's kind of base level comfort for, for an animal, right? It is, you know, they know what to expect, especially with fearful birds, right? Where it's kind of the unknown or the, you know, what's that object going to do that can be so, so scary. I think, I can't even remember if I used target training to teach him spin return. I used my finger or I think I just did this with a treat. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. When I got bogey, I literally was like the worst bird owner ever. And look at you guys now. With, with <laughs> diet and training. That's literally all I preach. I'm like, diet, diet, diet. Yeah. You want to know how to train? Diet. So if someone's bird is afraid of a stick or maybe it was abused with a stick, something mm -hmm. along those lines, what's the best advice for these bird owners on how to get their bird comfortable with a chopstick, something like that? Yeah. So I think there's a, a couple of different approaches and I think the approach that I would at least try first is just to desensitize the bird to the object, whatever you're using as the target stick. Um, and that can look a lot of, it can look different um, depending on how fearful your bird is, right? So sometimes it can be as simple as just having the object in sight um, of the bird, but you know, far away and you know, very slowly introducing it to the bird. You can also use a technique called response substitution, um, which is something that I talk about in my harness training video because that's what I used with, with Petri. And it's the basically a combination of positive reinforcement <laughs> with negative reinforcement, uh, where the negative reinforcement is just taking the object away from the bird. And that right. in and of itself is a reinforcer. But you do so after the bird allows you in a very calm manner to approach them with the object. And it's that combination of using um, positive reinforcement as kind of your primary reinforcer, right? Because birds respond really well to that. Mm -hmm. But then also using negative reinforcement in a way where basically all we're doing is respecting the bird's comfort and respecting their body language. Define Just so negative like reinforcement because a yeah. lot of people think that it's a bad thing. I know. Yeah. So we people it really quick. So people confuse negative reinforcement mm -hmm. with like positive punishment, which is like slapping a kid. So all negative reinforcement is is removal of a stimulus to reinforce a behavior. So reinforcing just means that we're whatever we're doing is going to increase the likelihood of that behavior happening again. So when we think of positive reinforcement, the bird does something good. We give it a treat. You That's add, you give. You positive just means add, right? So negative just means take away. So a negative reinforcement is taking away something to increase the likelihood of that behavior being offered to them. I think one of, that's one of the biggest misunderstandings of yeah. what negative reinforcement is. But I completely agree. And I think in, in kind of the nerdy bird community <laughs> out there that I am very deeply involved in, there is a, like, it's like a growing trend for people to start to incorporate negative reinforcement into their training. He is saying it to the measuring cups, just for reference here. These are his hats. These are not measuring cups. Wait, he yeah. likes them on his head? He likes them on his head. What do you mean? <laughs> there, there it goes. Hat. things we do, the things bird people do. But I think the, the important thing to kind of keep in mind with negative reinforcement is that in most cases, not in all cases, it is not as um, effective as positive reinforcement. I agree. It can be used as kind of a secondary reinforcer, right? So in that example, 
of you know the person stepping forward, clicking, rewarding, and then stepping back. It's just used to supplement um, right. the positive reinforcement. So another thing we forgot to mention is that if you have a bird who is very timid, unwilling to come out of the cage, or just blatantly really dislikes you, you can start by target training when they're in the cage. This is great because you allow the bird to accomplish something while being non-threatening and hands-off. Anyway, whatever you choose to do first with your bird, never force anything, take things nice and slow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please comment below if you have any other questions or I forgot something. Bye guys!